How would I sum up an SK? Transcendent. Welcome to the making of Tararua SK, where we're going to uh, take you behind the scenes uh, of our award-winning adventure documentary. I'm Andy. I'm the filmmaker, cameraman, narrator, distributor, uh, and orange boy. And I'm Hans, filmmaker, cameraman, film coach, and editor. Together, we'll break down the highs, the lows, and all the wild moments that went into creating Tararua SK. Yeah. And so it, it was obvious that it was starting to resonate with the people in the community. And then I guess the next challenge was, can this be appreciated by a wider audience? Mm. So that was really when you began the, the other half of documentary of filmmaking, which is content is king as they say, and uh, distribution is a queen, <laughs> if, you were to use, if, if you were to use those sort of terms. So this began your next adventure, really, which was getting it seen beyond the community mm. and also further into the community too. Yeah. 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 I really thought much about this prior to making the film and I'd never made one before, so didn't know anything about distribution. I thought, well, I thought that, I mean, I knew about film festivals and I thought, you know, I'd submit it to some film festivals and we'd done that for, you know, the New Zealand Mountain Film Festival and got in. And I thought would that somehow you'd submit it to festivals and that people would get to see it and that distributors would pay attention to film festivals and that would open up some opportunities. So after the New Zealand Mountain Film Festival, the, the New Zealand Mountain Film Festival has this national tour, but, but my film wasn't on the national tour. So the first thing I did was I contacted some of the organisations that were screening the national tour to see if they were interested in adding my film on as an extra. And a number of them did. So it screened, it screened in Wellington at the National Tour. It screened up in Whanganui, um, Palmerston North, Waikanae. So that was great. I had I got approached to ask if, if it could be screened at a big trail running event that was happening down in Arrow, Arrowtown. And, and there were a couple of other kind of screenings. And then... I thought, okay, I should submit it to some other film festivals. And the I knew about some of the big mountain film festivals around the world. I knew about Banff, which is, as far as I know, it's one of the largest and best in the world. And then there's there's a big there's a big one in America called Mountain Film, and there's a a, a big one in the UK as well. And so I submitted to quite a few festivals and I knew that with Banff if you got selected that you could possibly also get selected for their world tour and that would mean that it would go on this world road show that and in, in, you know went to many countries around the world including New Zealand and that's like the absolute mecca so I, I, I applied to I sub I signed up to the the film festival platform and submitted my film to to a bunch of different festivals and, and selected for for a couple which was really exciting and again I hoped that would mean that people got to see it and that you know there might be some further distribution but but that didn't happen and and the film didn't get selected for Banff and didn't get selected for the big UK and big US festivals, which was, yeah, that was disappointing. I submitted to lots of festivals and got lots of non-selections. Did get a few, a, a couple of selections, which was, which was exciting. One of them turned out to be just a scam. 
So that was a yeah. bit of that was a, of a bit of a learning curve. Mm. So the it turns out that the Tokyo Short Film Festival is actually just some people in Italy running a bit of an online film festival scam. And so <laughs> yeah, that was a bit disappointing, but we did get selected for a for the Toronto Documentary and Feature Film Festival, which is not to be confused with the the huge Toronto International Film Festival, which is very prestigious. But but and we won an award, which was really which was amazing. Film won Best Human Interest Film at at that festival, which which was super exciting and felt it was really nice that somebody from outside of New Zealand had appreciated what we created. And the film got selected for a, a film festival in Slovakia and be- became a finalist and also won, a, won an excellence award at, at another festival. But still no, yeah. no distribution. So, yeah. I, yeah. so I went in, so I signed up to do a course. I thought I have to learn film distribution. <laughs> so I did so this from one course to another. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'd done filmmaking and now I was doing mm. this film distribution course. So I did that. I found this I also found this amazing book on film distribution, which is called Beyond the Box Office. And it's all about distributing independent films. And yeah, so from there I I'd already set up the film so people could rent or buy it on the website that I created, sk.com, so that people who'd missed the screenings could could see the film. And we had a few people who had taken up that opportunity, which was great. And then through doing the course and reading the book, I started doing a little bit more started doing a little bit of marketing of the film, a little bit of digital advertising. I started reaching out to some different distribution companies to see if they were interested and just finding out what the avenues uh, were. And a few things that I found was, one was that for a lot of short independent films there's a lot of self-distribution that goes on and sometimes people put together little film tours they are selling direct they're using other platforms to get their get their films distributed so i so one of the early kind of ideas that i was that i had was in new zealand i knew i'd watch some adventure documentaries on in new zealand and so I thought it could be good content for them. So I reached out to them and got no reply. I followed up and they came back and said, media team will come back to you if there's any interest. And I heard nothing. So I, I have a friend who used to be uh, an executive at in New Zealand. So I asked if he would mind finding out who who kind of the person is to talk to. And he wasn't able to he wasn't able to find out. So then many months later, I was I was on a surf trip with a couple of friends and I showed them the film and we were talking about other ways we could distribute it. And and one of my friends who lives in Auckland said, Oh, one of my friends from down the road is an analyst in New Zealand. I could connect you. He might have a contact. And so through him, I found out the name of the content agency that that they use for their films, for their in-flight entertainment. And so once I had that organization's name, I sent them a message and said, hey, I've got this film. I think that it'll make great content. And, and they came back to me and said, Oh yeah, we're putting together some a content plan at the moment for the next kind of slot of four months. We'll check it out, and and eventually they came back and said, 
yep, we like it. We'll put it forward to New Zealand and see with the next batch of entertainment. And you know, it was super exciting that they came back and said, yep, we'll, we can get it on there. There was, first there was, like, so how much do you want for the licensing fee? And, and so I was able to find out through a friend who had licensed a, a short film before that they don't like to pay very much to license a short film, but we, but amazing to, to have it on in New Zealand. So, yeah, that's yeah. really awesome. Yeah. yeah. So, did you envision, you would, uh, did you envision that from the beginning when you started making the film that you'd no. be able to just have just re- seen in that way? That's pretty cool. Yeah. To be able oh, to, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing that, that people outside of, the direct kind of community will get a chance to see the film. And I've, we've both had messages from people that wouldn't watch the film otherwise. And so that's been super cool. Yeah. Getting the occasional message, the picture of the screen. Yeah. The, the back of the seat with the film poster. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And you didn't, you haven't stopped, you didn't stop there. No. You kept at it. <laughs> yeah. I kept at it. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, one of the things that I learned about in my course was just getting it on some of the other platforms, Amazon Prime Video. So that was so that's something that I was able to get the film onto. So that's available in the UK and the US for those audiences, and that was something I could manage myself. And then Apple TV. So I found. How, a way that I could get it on to Apple TV. And then I came, I learned about a independent film distribution, what they call a aggregator distributor. So there's a business called uh, Film Hub and you can license your film to them and they have... They work with about 130 different channels from all around the world on different platforms to license and distribute films. The film is on there and it's been licensed to a couple of different channels. In the US, there is a um, lots of people have these boxes that are kind of like a sky box and uh, the film screening on one of the channels uh, through that and there's a, f- a few others as well so yeah and we've together a few press releases and really it was really nice of the local media to pick that up and put together some and to just put together some great articles that appeared in the the paper and online and also Kyoto magazine through that a few more people have got to to rent and I see the so. film, so yeah, it's yeah, it, it's cool that <laughs> yeah. uh, it's got out there. Yeah. And I that, think it's an amazing outcome, in winning the awards, and also the, the. I never thought when I was editing it that it was going to be beyond the. I never really thought that far ahead. I thought oh, this is going to be in the film festival. Fantastic, that's great. Mm. I never thought it was going to be on streaming services and um, on in New Zealand and what you've been able to pull off with it. So it's great that it's actually out there and hopefully. People, you know, lots of different people, not just in the in that community. Other people, everyone can enjoy the film, and yeah, that's an amazing that you've been able to. Are you to pull all that off? Are you still hustling, or are you still looking for avenues to promote the film? Yeah, I'm still hustling. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be doing it for the next ten years. We, we we might have to do like the expanded ninety minute feature edition of the film or something. <laughs> do a re, a re, revisit it and make a an updated uh, twenty thirty version or something. Yeah. <laughs> Made it off. Yeah, yeah. So. It's been a pretty amazing last couple of years working together on this project. What's uh, what's one of the, the best moments that, from your perspective, that we shared over that time? Yeah, look, for me, uh, I think the collaboration has been really the, the key thing. It's been the, the really amazing thing that's come out of it, like the realisation that um, finding... It's, working together with somebody with a shared vision and but working together in a collaborative way where you're 
pushing each other a little bit and you're um, challenging each other a little bit too, asking questions and, um, you know, proposing ideas and the push and pull of that. And, and just the kind of the, that has what has been a real highlight for me is that you, doing things on your own is fine. But when you, when you join forces with somebody to create something, it, you can create something really amazing and it can be a really amazing experience. And a lot of the work I do for my work is on my own. And I ha am starting to work with people a lot more now, which is fantastic. And when you find, you know, when you find other people that can understand your vision, and I felt like I really understood your vision, it, to be able to just lend my skills into your vision was probably my highlight, <laughs> really. Yeah, I think just w something amazing that can happen when you just you bring other people, you bring people together to work on something. And I think as far as specific moments go, probably hearing it getting accepted into the, the, the film festival that you intended to get into, and then everything else that sort of come from that really. But yeah, just the fact that you were happy with the edit that I'd made, that, I'd, that was all I needed. That was my, that was very, that was a great moment. Just the fact that you were happy with what I was doing. So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> so, dream projects... If you could make a documentary on any topic or adventure anywhere in the world, what would it be and why? I don't know if I can answer that question. <laughs> okay, next question. I'm just trying to think. No, nothing jumps to mind. <laughs> yeah. So you're a your go-to activity to relax after filmmaking and dealing with all of the challenges. You've entered the world of stand-up comedy. <laughs> And yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, a, gr a great way of getting out of my filmmaking world, which can get quite serious, is to just do comedy. And I started doing sketch comedy during the COVID lockdowns at home because I realised I had a captive audience <laughs> for all my <laughs> stupid ideas. So why not? And that went really well. And and yeah, since then, I I, I guess when you said before, what, what are my long term, what are my goals or what, what would I like to do? I actually would like to produce I love filmmaking and I love documentary making and I, I'm planning to make more documentaries and I'm currently making a documentary about a, another street photographer, a photographer at the moment, which is part of a series I've been, I started four or five years ago and that's a, going on a bit of a tangent here now, but that's a documentary that's going to be taking at least a year to make. So I'm just checking in with this photographer as she's creating her, one of her photo books. Um, but, um, but I'm also, I'd like to create a sketch comedy series. I've taken a bit of a dev deviation from that at the moment. I'm trying stand out uh, stand up comedy, which is a terrifying thing to do. But yeah, these things are a great way of relaxing and a great way of taking my mind off the my job, if, as it were, and just having fun. Yeah. And so that's probably what I do really, as I, I really love comedy and uh, testing the waters and experimenting there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about favourite moment moments. What's your favourite moment in Tararua SK that gives you a smile or a sense of pride every time you watch it? Oh, gee, that is a tough question. Some things that during the during making, you know, editing this that just fell together, and that's, you know, due in part to just the strong narrative that was there already. But yeah, I guess one that jumps to mind just right at this moment is the you the the three of you were filming your yourselves completing. The trail coming out of the car park and so i was able to intercut as you guys were coming to the end so i was jumping from one camera to the next and then tim submitted a, a song and you didn't know what we could do with the song and i decided well, why not just put it over the over that part and that seemed to work quite well and then you guys hugging and embracing at the end yeah i, I felt like we had a good ending to the film and I, so i was quite pleased with that any other sort of moments that jump out yeah probably I just like the humour that you added into it, actually. Yeah, I like the around the, the canola royal and the hut and the stories about the some of the, the trips, I think. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Do you... What advice would you give to an aspiring filmmaker? Yeah, probably definitely getting people on board early on who share your vision so you're not out there on your own. And having a really thorough pre-production process, really like, researching, if it's in documentary, researching, really understanding the people who you're going to be interviewing, understanding the story. And also with documentary, just being really open to <clears throat> how the process will evolve along the way and making discoveries. 
So I having a plan, but not sticking to it so much that you're not you're going to miss opportunities that come up along the way. For example, finding that footage from Tim, just being prepared for uncovering things, and yeah, and just having a having a good solid plan about how you want to how you want something to be filmed and approaching it. But also, as you've done too, working getting advice from experienced people in the industry like Mark, and and just taking on advice that advice and getting yeah I think it's a it's definitely like a team effort yeah but probably the most important thing too is also you had a really strong story so having a strong story to tell is really important because that's what shone through from the beginning to the end was having the strong story so that was there well before I even touched it and also having yeah having the strong story and something else that just escaped my mind sorry yeah <laughs> have to chop this bit up. <laughs> that's right <laughs> I'm say, that's cool oh there's something else I was going to say there It'll come to me when I'm in the car driving home. Yeah. Cool. So I think that's... That were just a couple of things I wanted to cover. And so I was going to ask you, yeah, what would you do different now that you've come to the the end of the filmmaking process and you're still in the di- distribution process? Is there anything different that you would have done in hindsight with the pre-production, with the planning? or? Yeah. Yep. There's a whole lot of things I would have done really differently yeah one of the key things i would do differently is i would find i'd find some funding for the film some way to be able to make it financially work because it's been an amazing an amazing experience but it's also cost a reasonable amount of money which is not really long term sustainable to to do that so i would do that there's a huge amount of a huge number of lessons that i've learned around you know the storytelling process and how to approach that so i would so that would be yeah so i i i now have a little bit more of a formula around that so that would um, you know really change make that process work a whole lot better. Yeah, I, I think I'd have a, I have a much clearer kind of picture about what the, what kind of success looks like at the end, and work back to it from there. So, yeah, that would be some of the things I'd do differently. And what's a highlight for you of the film? So, the highlight for me is when you're in an audience watching the film listening to them react to it there's a i love a lot of i love all of the interview with dave kappa there's a line that gene delivers in the film around kind of leading into the weather section that just sends shivers up my spine every time i watch it and when she says that they, even though the forecast was bad, they yeah. went and did it anyway. And just, I'd never do that never again. Never do that again. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. just sends a shiver up my spine every time. Yeah. Yeah. She's learned a real hard lesson on that. Yeah. 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 But, but it must be, in the moment, must be hard to make those sorts of decisions if you're not used to being confronted with something like that where you've got that determination. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think for me, yeah. I've I've been in the range when the weather goes bad mm. and it's a terrifying experience mm. and so you can really hear that i can really hear that in her voice that it was scary and yeah that's and that's important isn't it to be able to have those kinds of sound bites in a documentary like this are really crucial so there's, there's a lot around that isn't there about creating an interview environment that people feel able to be that vulnerable or honest yeah, look, I was really, imp- I was so impressed and very grateful that people really, everybody really got into it, and everybody who was interviewed, they love adventuring, they love the the SK. It's, I think, it comes naturally for them to be connected and engaged with it. I think we've got really strong characters inside of the inside of the documentary 
and the, I think we chose those people because they wanted to be involved, but also because they were they're great characters. Which is another important point too. Yeah, <laughs> you've got a, a good, great story, good characters, and yeah, yeah. So mm. I, when I was first planning the film, I identified Tim as being an absolutely. I knew Tim would make a great character, and so I he was the first person I reached out to to ask if he'd be willing to be involved because I knew that having a strong character like that would really make it great. Mm. And Dave Capper was, I didn't know Dave. Dave became a really important character, a really strong character in the film as well. Yeah, mm. he's provided, provided that, that, that wisdom, that long-term sort of... Yeah, impact. yeah. Yeah, that yeah, it was really crucial. It's really nice to to hear him speak and his you know, like you say, his wisdom and his passion mm. was was very engaging. Mm. Cool. Should we do the outro? Yeah. Okay, so the so first line is yours. First line is mine. Okay, this is the outro. Okay. And that wraps up the making of the Tatarua SK. We hope you enjoy the stories from the Tatarua, the filmmaking challenges, and everything in between. I'll do that one more time. And that wraps up the making of the Tatarua SK. We hope you enjoy the... St- <laughs> and that wraps up the making of the Tatarua SK. We hope you enjoyed the stories from the Tatarua, the filmmaking challenges, and everything in between. Be sure to check out Tatarua SK at tataruask.com. Also screening on Apple TV, Prime Video, and in New Zealand. Thanks for joining us. What's your next adventure? Boom. Done.